Now, after we talk about convexity, the third part of this lecture is to give you a quick overview of what do I mean by constraint minimization. Okay, another thing that some of you have uh, seen before, but perhaps some of you haven't seen before. So uh, constraint optimization, uh, it is a problem where you have a constraint, uh, as it is named. Okay, so instead of just minimizing your function fx, you do have an additional constraint of hx equals to uh, the zero. And here I just put an index j here, where j will go from one to k, so you, you can have multiple constraints. Uh, I'm studying a thing called the, the equality constraint minimization, and in the tutorial you will also see examples on uh, inequality constraint optimization. Now, of course, the inequality constraint problems there are a lot harder than the equality constraint problems. Okay, so now, uh, if I give you a problem like this, okay, now you may ask, how do you, why do you need to encounter constraint minimization? Usually in deep neural network setting, I just minimize my loss. Well, who knows, because maybe in your, in your problem setting, you have some physical constraints that you you want your solution to satisfy that physical constraint, and you, you don't want to violate that. So then you want to put a constraint into your problem. It's unavoidable, so you do want to study this. Okay. Um, so how do we solve this problem? Well, the typical strategy is to form a thing called a Lagrangian function. The Lagrangian function is defined as putting an f, okay, your objective function, and then subtract the summation of all the news uh, this is called a new, okay? New will be a scalar, and you have k of them, times your, your constraint function. Now, the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, classical results in optimization says the following. Uh, if you have a solution x star, then the x star has to satisfy this pair of equations. First, if you take the gradient of your Lagrangian, you will get zero. Second, if you take the gradient with respect to your new, you also get zero, okay? Uh, this is called the um, uh, 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 objective function, and then here, this is called the Lagrange multipliers, okay? Or sometimes people call it the dual variables, okay? Now, this is not an op convex optimization course, so we don't, we don't want to jump into the discussion of dual variables, okay? But I, but uh, you can refer them as dual variables using the convex uh, analysis uh, notations. Okay, so uh, the Lagrangian function says this, I, I need to form a Lagrangian, and then I take the uh, uh, gradient with respect to x and v, uh, so that I can get a solution. And again, this is something that you should have seen before, but let me ask you why, okay? Why do you want to form this Lagrangian in the first place and take gradient setting to zero? Can you give me an extremely simple illustration to make it work? Um, so here is a pictorial example. Okay, now, now f you have you have taken a few lectures from me already, so you know I'm a very pictorial person. I want to explain things using pictures. Okay, uh, once you get a picture in mind, you know what you're doing. Otherwise, if you just look at the equations, you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so let's consider an extremely simple problem where you try to minimize this function. You have x, uh, uh, you have a vector x1 and x2. Okay, uh, these are the two coordinates. Uh, this is a linear objective function. And then you have a constraint that uh, x1 and x2, they have to live on a circle. They have to live on the, 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 the surface of the circle. Okay, so this is the definition of the constraint. So I can draw the circle, and then I can start to move this uh, blue line higher and lower. Now, of course, uh, if I have a blue line here, I will have a cost value of c, if I move to there, I will have another value C prime. If I go there, you'll have C prime prime. Now, which one is, uh, gives you a higher cost? Well, of course, this one, because it's high up there. Uh, you, you look at any x, or well, you look at any x here, uh, uh, of course, any pair of x1 and x2 will give you the same C, uh, but because you're on this side, uh, you know that the C has to be a bigger value. Okay? Compared to here, you will gradually reduce your, your cost value. So that means I draw the circle here, and then I have a bunch of lines. I need to push it until my objective function is minimized. And at the same time, I also want to make sure that my constraint is satisfied. So where is the optimum point? 
by not doing any calculation. Just look at the picture. Where is the optimum point? You move, move, until here. That would be your optimum point. Do you agree that? Okay, so move this line until you hit here. This line will give you the lowest possible objective value. See that? Okay, and then it is also satisfying the constraint. So that would be your optimum point, and I claim that this minimizer is at minus one, minus one for this problem. If you don't believe me, plug these two numbers into here and check, one, whether the constraint is satisfied. Yeah, of course. Two, is this objective value minimized? Now I have minus two. Can you get a number that's lower than minus two? You cannot, I promise. Okay, so that means I have found you the global minimum point. Okay. So that is the picture, okay? So now we are convinced that this is the group minimum point without doing any calculation. All right, now let's do a little bit more analysis. When you draw a circle, um, you can, the circle would define the constraint, the constraint set. And on the circle, you can always look at the gradient. The gradient is always pointing outward, okay? Uh, go back to your, uh, freshman calculus book, okay? <laughs> All right, so the gradient is pointing outward. Now, this is your gradient. Uh, it's called a gradient uh, edge uh, on, on x, okay? Now, of course, this x is not the same as this x. These two are different x's, okay? So you look at the gradient here, it's pointing outward. And then you can also draw all these blue lines you ask where are the blue lines? Well, the blue lines are here, and then what, how do I quantify them? Well, you can put, you, you can look at the normal direction. Okay? So the normal direction would define the, um, the, the, the gradient. So, so that is gradient of f evaluated at x. So now you try to overlap these two images together. Okay? Try to overlap them together. Then the following magic will happen. Okay? So you overlap them. At this point, okay, at this point, your gradient, okay, gradient H will be in opposite direction with your gradient F. Okay? This behavior happens only when you are at there. Now, if you are at here, if you're looking at this point, okay, this point, your gradient is pointing to here, but then your, your, the gradient of f is pointing to, to here, but then your gradient of h pointing to another direction. Okay, so they are not parallel. Uh, now of course here, it will be another thing. Uh, so this is gradient f, this is gradient h, they're pointing into the same direction. But if I only want to look at the optimum point, meaning that this point, then you have a magical formula that says, that the gradient of f evaluated at x star has to equal to lambda for some lambda, and hopefully this lambda is, is a number I can determine, and in this case it will be uh, some negative number, that would equal to the gradient of h. Now, you put things together, what do you have? Well, you have gradient, okay, you, you move this, the left hand, right hand side to the left hand side, you get this gradient of the Lagrangian, which is the gradient of f minus lambda times the gradient of h, equal to zero. Okay, a few slides back, what do you get? You get exactly this. Okay, so you put a gradient here, you get gradient on f and summation gradient of, of this lambda and then your h. It's exactly this result, okay? So that explains why you want to do the Lagrangian, because at the, Lagra at the optimum point, the Lagrangian, uh, taking the derivative of Lagrangian sending to zero, is reflecting this picture. That your constraint gradient has to be in the same direction or opposite direction as your objective gradient. If they don't, you're not at the optimum point yet. Now, of course, in this problem, you have, you have a difficulty where, uh, you have these two points, they, they, uh, they are all parallel. That's why you need to have a second order condition. Otherwise, what, what's the use of second order condition? The second order condition will tell you this is the maximum point, and here's the minimum point. Okay, so that's the usage of the second order condition. Okay, so this, uh, a few pictures that can explain the entire 
few chapters of a book on, con on constraint optimization. I hope you get this point. Okay? So that, that's, there's nothing too complicated beyond constraint optimization if you read the textbooks. It's all about forming of the gradient and then the gradient of Lagrangian. And why do you need a Lagrangian? It's because of this parallelism of, of, the, of, the, of the gradients. That's the, that's the intuition behind uh, these constraint optimizations. Get that? Okay. All right. So now for the remaining uh, five minutes, I want to show you a very, very, very useful example. Uh, an example that we uh, need to use um, perhaps a few times for the rest of our course. Um, I may not have enough time to go through the derivation in detail, but I would really encourage you to take a look at the at the, uh, at the proof uh, at home. Okay. Uh, the reason is that uh, this derivation is really useful. Uh, I want to explain why I want to care about this problem. This problem says that I want to minimize the distance between a point x and another fixed point, x0. I want to minimize the distance between these two. Subject to a constraint, that x has to live on certain space, uh, a x equals to y. So um, if you go down your slide, go to uh, slide number 25, um, you will see that, uh, as here's one example, okay? Suppose I have a plane, okay? This plane is defined as a W transpose x equals to zero. Okay, so this is, this is, this is a definition of a plane, of a hyperplane. I have a point x zero that's not on my hyperplane, and then I want to find the closest point in the plane, okay, uh, that has the distance with u that's minimized. That's called a projection. Okay? Now that's useful because think about in the classification setting, that would be your separating hyperplane, and then that's me measuring your margin. That's measuring how, how far you are from your classifier and then to the point that you have in your training set. The bigger the margin, the better you have. Right? So that's a very useful thing to know. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? Well, the problem is that you have x0, you want to find x here, that this distance is minimized, subject to the constraint that your x transpose w has to be zero. Now, what is w? W, w will, be the, uh, will be the orthogonal direction to the plane, which is the normal, and then x will be any uh, vector that's living on the plane, and so they have to be zero because they're orthogonal. Okay, so that's the orthogonality principle. So once you have this problem in hand, you realize that this falls exactly into the problem that we want to study, which is minimize the two-norm square subject to the constraint that is as equality constraint. All right? So now how do we solve this problem? Well, uh, you can go home and take a look at the derivation, which is basically setting up the Lagrangian, take the gradient, set it to zero, and then get do some algebra, then you can get a solution. The solution says that the x has to be equal to x0, the original point, minus, there's a constant here, okay, so this is pretty much like a constant, uh, because uh, there shouldn't be any, uh, there's, there's no transpose here, okay, so it's a constant times the w, so you're traveling along the w direction down to your plane, okay? Now, if you don't trust me, uh, it's okay, you can uh, do the following exercise in Python. Uh, type this code. So this is written in MATLAB, but you can do a one-to-one -one correspondence in Python. You can plug this in and check whether your analytic form, according to my equation, will satisfy what is returned by the computer. Okay. So you can also do this problem using using computer. And in the setting, it's very simple. Define variable, minimize this loss function subject to this constraint, and click a button, you get a solution. All right. Okay, so the last slide is about uh, the reading. So here is a list of um, papers, chapters that you are encouraged to, to take a look. Uh, that covers several books. Uh, I don't expect you to read all the chapters, but uh, if you can read at least one of the two or three books, uh, that would be pretty sufficient to understand the concepts, what we have discussed today. All right, so I will see you next time. <laughs>